Chit Chat is sponsored by Fun Again Games, where everyone is welcome at our table. And your source for hard-to-find imports, liquidation games, new releases, and much more. Be sure to visit funagain.com to check it out. On episode 85 of Chit Chat, we tap our devices and update our thoughts on app-assisted games. We have some fresh new friends join us tonight, and the whole crew is here to talk about games. Welcome back, everyone, to Chit Chat episode 85. This is looks even more uh, grandiose than last Ooh. episode because we've got Ryan here to my right. We've got Emily here, Hi. who you've probably never met, but Emily's joining us. And not only that, but we have, who's that I hear? I think I hear Jeremy Howard. Uh, no, it is Warabi. <laughs> Not Jeremy. Wallaby. <laughs> I can't wait till you edit this, dude. It's going to be so awesome. <laughs> oh, boy. So, <laughs> as you can tell, and hopefully I've edited this so that you can understand anything that was just said, uh, but Jeremy Howard is in Milwaukee, and we're trying something new here. And you can tell us in the comments below whether this should be the first of many times that we do this. <laughs> Or the absolute last time and you want your time back sort of situation. <laughs> I, I'm trying to make it as most, uh, as ridiculous as possible. Trust me. Oh, boy. He just wants to have fun with it. I, I mean, think I might plan technical problems and Jeremy might just go <laughs> bloop, bloop. You know, if you watched last week's Chit Chat or the two weeks ago, last episode of Chit Chat, it was just David and I. Yeah. So we wanted to do something a little different. I mean, we talked about what the channel was going to look like going forward, but we wanted to have the people that are currently working on the channel here. And Emily is kind of new to the channel, but she did, uh, if you watched our live stream last night, from the time this is being posted at least, <laughs> yeah. um, we did live stream Divinus, which was a lot of fun. So yeah, it was kind of your, your welcome. So thanks for coming and, and joining the channel with us and being on Chit Chat today. Yeah, it's a lot of fun being here. Yeah, we're going we're gonna to ask her some questions so you can get to know her a little bit, but we're not going to put her on too much of a spot. So we're going to talk about topics. We're going to talk about games we've been playing. Before we do any of that, we have a winner from the last episode. We do. So, yeah, last week we gave away the uh, AEG Big Game Night Collection, which was Whirling, Witchcraft, and 10. That is going out to Doug Radcliffe. Congratulations, Doug. Please email us at manversusmeeple at gmail.com so that we can get your prize out to you. That prize will come when the games, uh, when we ship the games, so whenever that happens to be. <laughs> Whenever that is. So not, not not long. I think that one is actually, we have copies of I'm it. looking at them okay, right there. Okay, so we'll be able to actually We send have that them, out. so I'm getting to a lot of shipping of prizes in the next week, so we will ship that yeah. out then. This week, we'll be giving away a game sponsored by Lucky Duck. They uh, was were gracious enough to give us a copy of Chronicles of Crime 1400? I Fourteen hundred. Okay. <laughs> Nineteen fourteen hundred. <laughs> We're giving away Chronicles of Crime. Here, let me let me say this. We're giving the away futures. this Chronicles of Crime. Here it and is. Now there's, on a, the right there's now. a picture right here floating around my hand. That's yeah. the game we're giving away this week. All you have to do is comment below, and uh, we will uh, find a winner for the next episode. Yeah. And the reason that we're giving this game away is because today we're talking about app-based games. Which is a topic we've talked about a little bit in the past, but when we been talked, a while. Well, when we talked about it last, it was kind of a, like a new technology. Now we're seeing this technology throughout gaming. I mean, there are so many games that have used apps innovative ways, and Chronicles of Crime is one of those. And so you'll be able to it was, try it out for yourself. Yeah, it was one of the earlier ones, and we'll just get rid of, right into that topic. Um, we had a chance to play Divinus on that live stream, mm -hmm. um, but we've been playing a fair amount of app-based games, and there have been some app-based yeah. games in the news lately that have also been a little bit controversial. Uh, Descent, we all know what you're talking about. Descent has a lot of people, I mean, there's a lot of things going on around Descent and people liking it, not liking it, all that sort of stuff, but one of the things about it is the app, and some people kind of have the sense that maybe it's too much of an app game. And that you could just play effectively the app, maybe, without having to do too much on the table. We've played the first scenario. Mm -hmm. So keep that in mind based on like, what we're about to say. What I can say from the first scenario is I really enjoyed that experience that you and I played uh, when we played that. The app did everything that I'd want it to. 
And everything that we were doing on the table was like kind of Christmas morning in terms of like just playing with new toys. Right. For me anyway. Well, that's that's the thing about about that game as an app. Descent follows the same pattern that Journeys of Middle Earth set and which Mansions of Madness, uh, Mansions of Madness set before yeah. that, which is that a lot of the story narrative unfolds over the app uh tells you when you enter a new room what's in the new room or what it looks like or which tiles come out i think that we're actually looking at two different types of games or two different categories of apps like there's those games which are a huge portion of the game takes place in the app and then there's games like divinus which we played earlier which i would consider more app assisted for sure yeah it didn't sure. like we we've played divinus and we played mansions of madness not too long ago um mansions of madness you're always using the app Mm-hmm. Yeah, what do you think about, you've played both of those, what do you think the big difference is for you in terms of playing those? Do you like the reveal that happens in things like Mansions of Madness? Because that's one of the things I like. I, I think I like the app assisted better. I, it comes to mind, we played Search for Planet X. Yeah. And that was definitely oh, yeah. more like app assisted, right? Where mm-hmm. you, you could play the game and it felt like a board game because you're playing it, but then you're going to the app to get more information so you're not like... Flipping through rule books five times, right? right? Um, I think I like that better because it makes it feel like I'm playing. still playing a board yeah, game. I'm still there, and I do get like when it's so much in the app, I do start to feel like why isn't this just an app or a video game or something different? It doesn't. I feel like I'm just putting pieces on a board so that I can put pieces on a board. Yeah, that's fair, and I think that is one way to look at it. I, for some reason. So in video games or board games, mostly video games though, I really love that feeling of revealing and exploration. Mm -hmm. And that's really hard to have in a board game without, I mean, there's ways of having it, I suppose, but man, the app really makes Mm -hmm. that happen. And while it does slow down sort of the gameplay, I think, you know, so when you used to play Descent, or even Old Mansions of Madness. Yeah, a lot of stuff. There was someone who set up the whole thing. So it was sitting there on the table. Everyone saw what was potentially going to happen. But now, I love the fact, personally, that it's been replaced with, okay, I'm going to open up that door, and then all of a sudden you see it. There were times when we played Descent, the first scenario, where Mm -hmm. that was just, you open a door, and we thought we were maybe done with the scenario. (laughs) And there was this whole new big area, and we're like, what? Uh... And that's just a fun part of the experience for me. Yeah, Jeremy, you strike me as, you're a pretty technological guy. Are you a big fan of these apps? I don't know if I've ever seen you really playing app-based so, games. So so my favorite game, I think, let, let's just do a little journey, because 2016 was when I came back into board games, and one of the games that was, I think, around that time was Madness of Madness oh. was, coming, was coming back out. I think that was when the second edition came out. Pretty close. Around that time. Yeah. And... I bought it. It was my most probably one of my most expensive games early on, and I, I was not feeling the app thing. Like I wasn't at all. Uh, it took until two years later, and I'm pretty sure it was two years later in 2018 when Chronicles of Crime came out. That was my favorite game that year, and it trust me, it, it's a scanathon. I mean, you got to scan some QR codes like you're at Target. <laughs> but I enjoyed my experience. Like I, I really enjoyed my experience. One of the things I think I'm, I'm, a, I'm, I'm really testing the waters with Descent. I'm very much testing the waters. Like I don't know how good it's going to be. I'm worried about it, but I'm in for the experience because I feel like we've evolved enough with app integration since like the other final, like the other Fantasy Flight games, that we'll find out, like how deep can we go into this app thing without, you know, and still have a great experience on the table? Because to me, app games, games with apps outside of helpers, like there's still a thing about board games and video games that are separate. I like the tactile feel of board games. I like to move my big dudes and my, you know, all my warriors and stuff around this map and to put things out because I do like the physics physical or football term physicality of of board games you know like i like that feeling i i don't want to play a video game but for some reason these present a hybrid and i like hybrid too it's just that i i have to find which ones i like and which ones i don't like you know i I really do like game for game it just depends on the experience and this is going to be a heavy campaign game i don't know how i'm going to feel about it yeah like past past the excitement maybe of a first or second game like i don't know like I, I'm playing this wild card. I'm excited, you know, about that wild card. But uh, 
I'm worried too, you know? Yeah, I think the, I mean, I agree with you. I like the hybrid thing a lot. And I do think it's fair. I think the initial glow of that first scenario is probably hot in yeah. our heads. We'll see how and it, it was feels. a lot of fun. I would say I wouldn't want to play this game um, over and another. I don't want to play any game over and over and over right in a right. row. But I know a lot of people with these games in particular will do that. Like campaign you know, games, like sit down like on four a Saturday or five scenarios in a and row. play four, scenar- four or five scenarios of that. Yeah. I can you tell you out. that I would get a little burned out. And I will say this, as much as we enjoyed that first experience, there were times where it was a little bit cumbersome, mm-hmm. um, not just the building of the stuff, although I didn't mind that really. I personally didn't mind the, the slower pace of building things as we needed them. And it wasn't like a ridiculous amount of building. If you no, have, it wasn't so bad. If you have the stilts pre-built, you're just popping those on a platform and plopping it down. Um, and it's really satisfying to do that. But actually more cumbersome was kind of going back and forth between the app and the game. Right. Because there's a lot of navigating even in the app. Like, once you get used to it, it's fine. But, like, attacking uh, monsters and things like that. And then there's a little bit of a disconnect where you look at the map in the app. And, of course, your characters aren't on that map. Right, because they wouldn't know where you are. You're moving on the physical map. And that makes sense. But it is a little weird for me. But if the characters were on the map, then it literally would just be yeah. a video game. No, and I, and yeah. I wouldn't be surprised. And yeah, you're you're right. They couldn't track you, but there is probably a fringe benefit of it just avoiding feeling even that much more like right. a video game. Right. Jeremy, I want to jump in because you you said something about Chronicles of Crime, and I'm, like that really hit me because I think Chronicles of Crime is one of the games that that did it the best, and I think that one of the reasons yeah. it did it so well is because the app that you're using or the phone that you're using or whatever, they make it feel like a tool in the game. You're using it to yes. scan in evidence. Yeah. You're using it to look at like yeah. augmented reality. Like It doesn't feel like an outside part. It feels like just as important of a component as the cards. And you're mm-hmm. going back and forth from the cards to the app. It's not. It doesn't even feel app assisted. It literally just feels like it's all one It's very well, very well integrated. Sure. So here's the deal. This is something that I can side rail it a little bit. I don't want to go too far off the hinge because I could talk about app assist and stuff. But like, let's look at a game like Detective. You know, yeah. like Detective is a game that you use the internet for. You know, like literally a website, you know, like is in there. And it's it's just such a cool thing to see what the hybrid really is. Um I mean, I think we've become a very comfortable, especially people who play campaign games with app-assisted games, mm-hmm. uh, if they have heavy upkeep. And I would assume Descent has heavy upkeep, so they're trying to take that away from you and put it inside the app. Mm-hmm. And I'm, I'm comfortable with that. That part I'm comfortable with. It's just that, like, Chronicles of Crime, for some reason, I think it gets away with it because it's so well-written as well. And I think that's something we need to address too, is that like with apps, when you have a heavy reliance on app, how much am I getting into the theme? I don't know if necessarily that is something we've transferred yet, like mentally, like how, how deep are we immersed with an app? You know, like we can't all sit with our headphones on and, and like feel the music. Sure. We can't all, you know, we can't all, I mean, I guess if we have it on our TV, you're assuming everybody has tech galore, it, that they can all read it together uh, and experience it. There's something about a DM reading something to you versus uh, a screen reading it to you. Uh, you know, like, so I, I, I think about that. There's some disconnect there. And I, that's what I worry about with the sand. I've already seen some of the, the video coverage of it and like the guy stepping in and out. That's a video game like thing. But I also have three other people at the table with me sometimes, right, for this mm. game. And I worry about that not being exciting. You know, like I worry about that. So Jeremy, on so this isn't. I, I know you wanted to talk about what I'm about to bring up too, and it's not exactly app-assisted games or app-integrated games, but is also sort of the fringe topic of app versions of board games. Yeah, that's a whole yeah. different topic, I think. Well, it, but I think they're 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 all they're kind of combined because he was talking to me the other day about things like Through the Ages being like maybe even a better version of the game. 
Well, yeah, because yeah. it takes all the upkeep away. It, and, and, and that's, that's, right. that's, that's what a lot of that Or like Root, like Root, same thing. Like if you don't know how to play Root, I can learn how to play Root, and I can play Root without the game. Like I can straight up, like there's, you almost feel like you don't need to own the game anymore because it's so smooth. It rep, The AI is there. They're adding all the expansions. It's beautiful. It's got cool music. Like it's so much better. Like that's the thing. I think we're starting to get to this point where some of the apps, and I think publishers are like warming up to this. You know, Direwolf has been, you know, implementing things, and they yeah. started out just making the app for like uh, what's his name for Clank, and now here they are, you know, going all in with Root and uh, Sagrada. Uh, you know, they made Sagrada amazing. Uh, you know, and it's like some of these companies, Asmodee, even Asmodee is creating these experiences that you may not even want to break the game out, or you'll use it as your travel app, or you'll use it as a distraction, but it's getting pretty close. Yeah. Uh, it's getting pretty close. I think more For often, some games, for some games. Yeah, more often than not, I think a lot of them view it as marketing for the actual game. I think, too, Jeremy, you might have a unique perspective because you do so much solo play anyway Yeah, yeah. that I think the app versions of the game are going to, uh, they're, they're bound to be a little bit more interesting to you. Emily, have you, do you play many board games digitally at all? I play some. So I have a friend group that's kind of spread out across the country, too. So oh, we do tabletop. That's another. Um, but again, I, I love doing it in person much more, right? Yeah. So I'll do it on Tabletop Simulator because I want to play games, um, but I'd much rather them be there in person with me and get to move the items and actually roll the dice and do everything. Um, yeah, but there, there's a, uh, some games work better in different formats. Mm -hmm. So we had a conversation about mansions, and I'm curious about this. Because you were kind of lukewarm on mansions. I don't want to put words in your I mouth. definitely lukewarm on mansions. <laughs> so, well, but, she just took those words and put them right out there. But if Mansions of Madness had just completely been a, a video game, a digital experience, mm -hmm. do you think you would have liked it better? Mm. No, because I think I wouldn't have played it. I oh, think really? if it was just digital, I would have said, this is not a type of game that I enjoy, and I'm just not going to yeah. play it. I wouldn't, have, I wouldn't play it at all. Yeah. yeah, because I've I played video games like that, and I know I don't I don't like them, so I just wouldn't have played it. But because it's a board game, I was like, oh, let's see what it's like. And then I was like, I still didn't like it. No, no, and that's perfectly like that's perfectly fair, of course. Like, How do you feel about mansions? I, I, I am back and forth with mansions of madness, and a lot of it is based on the snare that you play. I really like it a lot better than the first edition for sure because of that narrative experience that we get to do cooperatively. There's no one overlord which is something new with the set as well i think that's well. great i think that's great the old descent was one versus many where one person was the bad guy and everybody else fought against them i don't really like that in fact i only have one of those games left in my collection and that's the others which i will probably never get rid of that's one versus many that is one versus oh. many um but for some reason that one works for me and descent never really did and mansions first edition never really did but it's the, some of the scenarios tend to like go a little long and so it's a very hit and miss experience for me but I love the app integration part of Mansions. I do too, but I have to say, I played Mansions uh, once and liked it. Then I've only played Mansions of Madness 2nd Edition like maybe four times. Mm -hmm. And by that fourth time, I think I'm in Emily's camp with just feeling kind of meh about it. Like it, it didn't feel like, well, I, I guess there's just a lot of other games in of that ilk. That I enjoy a lot more. Well, like that, like uh, Death May Die. Well, Death May Die is certainly a different ish, sure. ish game, but absolutely, I'd played Death May Die yeah. a million times before I'd I played. I it. have a thing about that though. Like that's standing on the shoulders of giants, though. Like Man's of Madness is a giant. Yes. Now you know the next game sure. comes and it's like, hey, I was a fan of that game and I designed a game too. You know, like it, it, you know, it plants the seed for something else to grow, you know? Yeah, so it's like, I get I get that. I think the big one here is, is that like Mansions of Madness is a good example of like video games and board games aren't exactly the same. Like for example, like I like the feeling of playing a chip theory game, but I also like the feeling of playing Fire Emblem. You know, like they're just two different things to me. Like. And sometimes if you say, hey, like I would make a Chip Theory Hoplomachus app, okay, that sounds cool. <laughs> that kind of sounds cool. But there's some reason, there's just for some reason I like to separate them. Uh, 
and, and it proves out when you have these hybrids and they just are kind of meh. I'd rather have one or the other, you know, um, or sometimes I go like, hey, I, actually, I do like an app to help me out a little bit with this one. It's just so such a weird, weird spot we're in right now. Honestly, this, this, I feel like in this app space, we're in such a weird spot, but I like that it's moving forward. It's pressing on instead of dialing it back. Um, and just to kind of, I don't want to take over, but one of the big ones was, is I learned that through Taburu when we played oh, that. Yeah. And I was like, oh, this could even be bigger, you know? So, I, I, you, I mean, like I said, we're in that age. We're going to see. We're going to see very soon how, how big this can be. Um, yeah, that's, that's the thing is I wouldn't want anyone to say, you know, any publisher out there to put out a game with an app, and maybe it does get a lukewarm response. Right. And for them to go, ah, oh, well, I guess we'll just make board games. Because... Yeah. Things have to move forward, and I do think technology like this is, whether we like it or not, more and more in our lives. Mm -hmm. I don't mind it being in the board game space, and when it hits, like with Chronicles of Crime and some other things, it hits really well. Yeah. And as long as people are experimenting and we see some of those successes come, and like what you just said, Jeremy, some people will stand on the shoulders of these new giants right. who are forging the way with technology once maybe... Uh, someone really nails it and and I think it really does boil down to that perfect balance of integrating it because most of them are cool the first time you play it because there's the novelty right. um, but then once that novelty wears off which may be the case with uh, with, with descent, descent we'll see I, I I'm I'm being very optimistic about it as of now still yeah. um, but we'll have to see I would be it. wide open to it like that's the thing like I, it would take me three or four sessions to really know how I feel about for it. sure like, it just would. Like, I know it would. I think by the time I come down there, I think I'll know without a doubt. I'll, without a doubt. I'll, I'll tell you, um, for without giving too much away, without giving spoilers, what what sealed Descent for me um, as, as me enjoying it was the first time that I went up to one of the trees. There's literally, literally like tree trees that you say they're cardboard, yeah. but you can interact with them in the app. And the first time I did, I could gather things from the tree and then our inventory just like ding ding dinged with like you yeah got 11 leather and you know four mushrooms and like all of this it felt like that like the video game experience it, where like you're just yeah. getting all this stuff and that's not an experience that i'm used to having in a board game sure. because but it was cool you, there's like t we've seen maybe like 15 different crafting resources that we've seen that we've collected in the first scenario which you could never keep track of all that in a normal board game like how many different component pieces would you need exactly. for all these different crafting options? And you can actually use these items to craft like upgrades to your weapons that give you like yeah, I got hit, new, pit percentages. I got new pommels for my swords. Right, and the app can do these things. Like in a board game, can you imagine how tedious it would be to like look at all your resources, try to do this crafting system, then every time you attack, you have to roll a dice to hit, roll a dice to see if your effect goes off. Roll a die to see if some other thing I mean, happens. there's still dice rolling and stuff. There, but well, there it does, is. It does take a care of a lot of but those But a lot of things. that stuff is done for you. A lot of that upkeep. And it allows you to do things that you could never do in the game. I mean, you'll have to try it. I know you're not a big video game fan. Mm -hmm. um, do you think maybe that's why you don't aren't drawn to like those kind of games? Or? Not a big video gamer? I'm not a big video gamer. Um, I've played. I will play. But I, it's not my go-to. Yeah. I definitely... I agree completely with what Jeremy was saying earlier that... They're just different experiences, right? So I really like that experience of playing a board game. And there are good video games, right, that mm -hmm. you like the experience too, but it's just, it's very different. And so I, it's not that I don't like them to be integrated, though. I agree that if you do it well, it hits right, right? But I think sometimes games get into this like, oh, well, this will make it easier. But easier doesn't necessarily mean more fun yeah. or yeah. enjoyable. Right. Yeah. Would right. you say Search for Planet X is your number one? Yeah, I mean, like, think just oh, yeah. go ahead. I'll search for Planet X is freaking awesome. Which yeah, I think it's yeah. so I mean, awesome. <laughs> like, it's so awesome. Like, I, yeah, that's actually a really good one right there. It's like relying on the app. It's just a home run. Like, it's an absolute home run. Now, yeah. it, with Search for Planet X, you don't have to have the app, right? You do. You have to have the app. You do. The, oh, app, yeah. the app is what tells you all of the secret oh, stuff that's that you're right. researching. You and 
it does it in a in a really cool way. Encrypted. That game. Encrypted that game's Arcane gonna kill at Gen Con. I swear to you, if you have that at a convention, it's gonna kill. Oh yeah. gosh, it's so fun. Yeah, yeah encrypted crypt- doesn't require the app, but man, does it make the game easier and more fun. It does. Say, you I, like using the books? I kind of like I, the tactile use of the books. I do. The thing is that uh, <laughs> I've used both, right? So for Cryptid, the app is good, right? It's fine. But I also have people who use it and then forget like when to press or not. Oh, press. Yeah. That's, they end up seeing that's what a, they're not supposed to uh, see. And they're like, okay. Right. So I have the physical copy. And when I play with people, I'm like, I'm just going to use the physical copy. Because it's not hard to be like, sure. look in the book and look at number 56. Here you go. Yeah. Like, it's not a lot of information that they have to be looking at. Whereas... Search for Planet X would be a ton of information. Oh, it, right? it, it would be. It made a lot of See, sense there to make it into an app and to just be like, don't worry about it. We'll figure it out for you. Whereas Cryptid, I just feel like it's it was still easy with booklets. Sure. Right? Yeah. So, Plus, it's fun so, just having those booklets. I think that's kind of a, yeah. a nice, cool, old school touch. It made me that's, think of like hint books or like yeah. those decoder yeah. books for computer games. That's a thing. See that that's a that's another part of it right there. What you just said. It's it's still a, a gaming activity. Mm-hmm. Like people are incorporated. Uh, like you know, like that's the thing. Is like sometimes we don't want our group doesn't want that detachment. Like you may be able to play app games with a certain group. They love the novelty. Like they love the experience. They like putting on the VR goggles attached to their phone and looking around. Other people do not want to deal with that. They like the physic like the physical part and. You give me this book and I'll look up this rule. You do that while I'm doing that. You're like, here, here, you look up this code while I look up this code and try this over here. And they like that physicalness. That's the thing. It'll never go away. Mm-hmm. But I also like that our, we, we want to move our hobby forward in something like this. You know? It can only get better, honestly. It can only get better. Yeah, so uh, let us know what you all think about app driven games or board games that are app versions or anything related to board games and, and apps in a well, yeah. sort of Reese's peanut butter cup sort of way. I, I'm interested <laughs> to hear people's recommendations too. If there are app driven games that we haven't played or one that you don't hear us talking about, like, yeah. like tell me, cause I'm always interested in finding games that use apps in unique ways. And I was an early adopter to this. I remember when XCOM came out, people were really complaining about the fact that there was an app. And I was like, this is... That was one of the first. That was... what It was, it was the first I ever played. Yeah, I think I, it, I think it, it was. It was pretty close to the first period. I don't know if it... I, I don't know if I can say it was the first. For an app. I mean, but, in, in a weird way, and I promise we'll move on to the games we've been playing, but in a weird way, you look at <laughs> old classic games like Dark Tower, it doesn't use a phone or an app, but it is an electronic-assisted game. That's true, and Omega For, Virus Omega, was the same Omega way. Virus is the same way. There's something that those electronic bases did that you really just couldn't do. Or uh, do you remember those old like nightmare VHS games? Oh, God. where you had to actually oh, put the you remember VHS Night Trap, in. Dude? You remember Night Trap? Yeah, like, that, oh that's, my God! Like, that uh, is, well, that's not app assisted, but I, yeah, whatever. But I, I get what you're saying. The VHS player was the original app assisted board game. Yeah, we that's had some, funny. We had some that's laser funny. disc uh, murder mystery games. Right. I mean, I think that that those like are what grew into this. Right. Without those games. We probably wouldn't that, have that's the app That's fair. That's now. fair. Uh, well, that, that's a whole other topic for like two more episodes or a series of <laughs> live stream. One of those laser disc games. So let us know what you think in the comments below on that. But before we wrap up, we do want to talk about the games we've been playing. Yeah. Jeremy, do you want to start with what you've played recently? Uh, it's going to be Rocket Man this time. Uh, <clears throat> so I've I've only played it twice. Uh, but I. I, I... I have some impressions of it. I think I'm going to review this one for the channel. I, I think it, it merits a, a more time, uh, but it's a deck builder. You're kind of flying to space. It's got high risk to it, so you're going to be flipping these cards to get yourself inching closer to Earth, Moon, or Mars. So it's kind of like you prepare, you prepare your cards, you buy these cards, and then all of a sudden, uh, when you've prepared enough to launch, you got a nice little combo to launch, you start, you launch, but the thing is, is you have to flip these cards to kind of like boost your engine to get there. You don't always get all the way there. You, otherwise, you'd have to slow play a lot. But there's also the risk of not making it. And if you don't make it, you lose all the cards you prepared. Or you can partially lose them. And that's been the part where it is either work for my game room or they go like, get this game out of here. Uh, and it's just been interesting. Uh, and I have been playing it solo too. So the other two plays I had were solo. So I played it, actually I played it three times. So, uh, yeah. And it, it, when it plays solo, it's like kind of, it's actually like a, it felt better to me so far. Hmm. So I don't know, maybe cause I don't want to play with people who poo poo my game. 
but <laughs> I don't know. I don't know, but whatever. You know, like I, I'm enjoying it solo right now, and uh, yeah, you know, results may vary, but I'm gonna definitely play with my group again. So we'll see. Jeremy, I have one thing to say to that. If you find that every game plays better solo, it may not be about the game. <laughs> Yeah, maybe you just hey, don't hey, like hey, playing with hey, people. Hey, pipe down, pipe down, pipe down, guys. No, I'm not okay. judging you. I'm judging okay. maybe the people you could play with. Okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> you want me to give one more or no? You want me to give one more? Uh, no, Emily, got, what, I, what, what have you been playing? Ahead. I know most of what you play, Emily, is with Ryan. No, I don't know about all of it, but... We play a lot. By the way, I play a lot together. I'm learning stuff tonight. It sounds like you're a deduction game fan. I do like. Yeah, we yeah Yeah, we played a good amount of Search for Planet X. I did you play? Have you played Mind Management? That's I was gonna bring up Mind Management. Yeah, I have it. I have it sitting on my shelf. Um, Deduction. Yeah, I mean, what's well, hidden movement, but it's oh. deduction it's hidden for the movement, other players. But yeah, like sure. it's, dedu- it's definitely deduction. Uh, it's called, My goodness. It's, uh, called Mind Management. It's a uh, it's based on a graphic novel series. It's very interesting, and it is a hidden movement game, but it is also a pure deduction game because the game yeah. gives you so many clues to deduce from that the players that are not the hidden mover, it's not so much about guessing where you think they're going to go. You can literally look at where they've been to deduce where they're going. It's yeah. super cool. Did you- you can write down the clues literally on the board. Like you can write down little clues, and then when somebody asks you a question, you're like, "Well, I asked this person at this time, so one, two, three, four, five. They have to possibly be here or here or here." And it's like then you can ask me another question, and if if the if the hint hits, I can't lie to you. So it's like, all right, so now we eliminate these five things, and it's I mean it's pretty good. And even if you make one mistake, you could possibly get away. I almost got caught, and it really came down to a 50-50 choice. Nice. Yeah, I mean, I was like, this is awesome. This is so awesome. Like, this felt, it felt so good that it actually came down to me being caught by a 50-50 choice. I like that kind of stuff. Yeah. Wow. That's cool. I'm bringing that to my game day this weekend. I'm hoping it gets to the table because I, I, I've been dying to play it again. So we what? asked you what you've been playing, and then we started <laughs> talking yeah, about deduction games. What, what, what have you played recently? Well, talking about escaping, we just played Escape Plan. Because um, we've been going through the Lacerda oh Lacerda, games. Games. we've been yeah. going through the Lacerda collection. I really like them a lot. I have. I wonder. Them okay, can you tell the audience why you like them so much? Because <laughs> they're great games, not because I've won all of them. Oh, she's won played. every yeah. single one, and uh, we played Kanban twice. That's true. What's your favorite so far? My favorite was Kanban. Um, so what have you played? Oh, wow. Kanban. Kanban on Mars. And, and then we Escape Plan. And then we're doing Gallerist next. So Lisboa we'll, on the table? Lisboa will be. I mean, oh. we're going to play through all of them. So that's that's our goal. But yeah, I really like them a lot. Um, Escape Plan was good. It was fun. Those kinds of games always get me super worried from the start because I'm like, oh no, I'm going to be the person who doesn't escape. And if you don't escape, you're just not in the runnings, right? It doesn't matter what you did the yeah, rest of the game. Yeah, it doesn't matter. So I was the it's, first one to escape. I was like, I got to get my ticket out of here. Nice. And I was like, as long as I did that, I'm okay. I, you know what's funny is that you won. You probably could have won even more, but I, I could see you getting like so nervous. You're like, I, I got to get out. <laughs> like, because in escape plan, you, you only get like three actions in a day, mm-hmm. but you can use any of those actions to escape. So you escaped an action two. Oh. No. Or you I, had extra, but I had an extra you action, could have gotten extra actions. You're yeah. just like, I'm not even going to use my extra. I'm out. I'm just getting out. That's funny. There's a lot of pressure in that game. Mm-hmm. It's it's very different from all the other Lacertas, I yeah. think. Like th- that one's it's the most. It's a weirdly the most thematic, like literal thematic, like very th- like in a sense, it doesn't dodge the thematic. Like Gallerist is sort of thematic, but like that one is like, hey, we're escaping. You got to run around. You got to literally dodge cops. Right. You mm-hmm. know, like and they they impede your progress. Lacerda is my favorite designer, so I will bow out. I can go on forever. Well, yeah, that's, and that's how we got. Like, we all love Lacerda in my, in my gaming group. We have another guy, Matt, who works for QML. He's a big Lacerda fan. And we, once we found out that Emily likes heavy games, it was like, okay, they're a little heavy. To, a little heavy are, for me. They are a little heavy. I did like Lisboa once we finally learned how to play it. Now, bear with me. We played it before there was a final rule book, so we were like trying to make our way through that. So it was a lot at the time, and particularly a lot for me at the time. I've played much, you know, a heavier game since, uh, but I did enjoy it. And then speaking of theme, even though it doesn't probably tie in as much as its Escape Plan does with a the theme, I felt the theme in uh, all of his games I've heard, and particularly his Boa, good. which was kind of like uh, from his heart because you know it's from his uh, hometown. I think. Yeah. Uh, the theme really came through a lot of the mechanics in a really cool way in that one. 
you know, I think all of his games are super thematic, and and the there's a lot of hidden, the, the heaviness is hidden in those games because like mm-hmm. Escape Plan, it's like what do you do? Well, you move or you rest. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. And, well, and wait, hold on, hold on. You forgot the seventeen executive <laughs> actions on the other side of the card, as is in <laughs> right. all of his games. Well, and, so yeah, I, that's what I love about it. It's like, oh no, you only have two <laughs> actions, three actions you can do in the game. Oh yeah, uh, flip over the card. <laughs> Combat is the same way. It's like. Combine's worker placement. You're like, you just take one of these like nine worker placement spots mm-hmm. and then the 20 other things that cascade off of those yeah. decisions. Yeah. It's the cascade. Well, let, it, let us be clear though. Lisboa literally has a pamphlet. <laughs> <laughs> it has a brochure for the game. Yeah. It was, okay. a, it was a heavy experience for sure. Lisboa's on the heavier side even for Lacerda's. Yeah. But we're, we're playing through them all because uh, for those who don't know, Weather Machine is coming out sometime in the near future, which I'm yeah, very buddy. excited about. It's Lacerda. It's steampunky. I am all you're, in on you're that hundred percent. <laughs> I'm ready. So I, I'm eager to get that. So that's what we have. I mean, that's a lot of what we've been playing. Have you yes. played anything yeah. else yourself? You know what I want to talk about? One that you introduced me to, and we played it on the live stream. And that was Biavi. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. So this is a game that somehow completely flew under my radar, and it's by one of my favorite designers, Kiesling, uh, Michael Kiesling, who did Azul. And he worked on Heaven and Ale, which is great. Yeah, and then all f- the a few. Noteworthy games. A few noteworthy games and all like the Keesling and Kramer games yeah. you might be familiar with, uh, like Riverboat and just whatever. They're very prolific. They do great Euro designs. And he did a game for Hava, which is why it flew under my radar. I don't tend to... Well, they're look... like family kids they, games. Typically. Hava you is sleeping, family man. kids you games sleep normally. Man. Oh, man. Honga. You sleeping on Honga? You yeah, sleep Honga on a lot is another things, good man. one. Although Honga, Jeremy, that's not quite as meaty as Miyabi, right? Miyabi was... was Ah, uh, dude, <laughs> Hanga is a sleeper, man. I'm telling you. Okay, dude. I'm telling you. I'll take. I mean, <laughs> it's not that I. Un, it's not that I overlook Hava. Like I have a lot of Hava games, and I love like you know Super Rhino Hero. Yeah. Um, and I have even the giant version of Super Rhino Hero, which is a lot of fun. Oh, do you? <laughs> yeah, you stack up those towers. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah. but this one is by the same designer as Azul, and it is a tile placement game. Kind of. I mean, not really like Azul, but it is tile placement. That's really where the well, simulator and is. And it's in. super thinky um, because you're placing tiles on top of tiles, yeah, and you really so wind for wanting to try to do that to score the most points. Plus, there's what five modules you can add to it. Yeah, I, I want to play. We've played with. We've, we've played never with played with all no five. No more than three. I still haven't played with the last one, which was that. Uh, well, I can tell two you, other ones. even just playing with three of them, let alone five. Yeah. It is a meaty, thinky game. It reminded me a yeah. lot. I don't know if you, anybody out there that's watching it played Taverns of Tiefenthal. I hope you have. It reminded me a lot of that, where it's like you have a very simple game, but then you start adding on these modules and adding on these modules, and the oh, game yeah. becomes so much deeper. Uh, and, man, don't ignore Miyabi. Like, if you are a Kiesling fan or Kiesling and Kramer fan, get that one. Yeah, for sure. In fact, I remember when we live streamed it, there's a lot of people in the comments saying the same thing that you're yeah. saying right now. Is like, yeah. Don't sleep on that. There's a lot more of, to this game than people think. This is good. So speaking of a lot more to a game than people think, I'm going to talk, uh, and you guys are going to have to stop me. All right. But I've been playing. Stop, David. I've been playing. Where is it? Oh, Cuba Libre. Cuba, Cuba, Cuba Libre. Was it last Chit Chat that we even talked was, about that? So here's the story. <laughs> there is a whole story. So last Chit Chat, if you watched... I mentioned that I wanted to because uh, Rodney from Watch It Played has been, you know, singing the praises of uh, coin games in general, but this one in particular because it's a really good one to get your feet wet. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people think it's the best one. These are not my kind of games. I said that last time. These are very meaty, incredibly rules intense. And conflict driven, right? And conflict. Oh, yeah, absolutely conflict driven. Uh, this is about the the sort of uh, insurgency in yeah, Cuba Castro's in, insurgency in right? 1958, 1959. Also historical stuff, not usually my cup of tea. But with that said, I said all that, and then I have to thank very much uh, Tone Lustra. I think is what he goes by on our Discord server. No idea who he is in real life. No, I I, I think I do, but I'm going to protect his name oh. uh, because he he messaged me privately afterwards because I had jokingly said in the comments to him like, oh, you got to give me that copy because he said he had a copy he'd never played it. He he messaged me privately and said, hey, I'll I'll send this to you, and I was like, no, you don't have to do that. And he he was very he was like, no, no, please, I just wanted to. Get it. Uh, game so i said great let me know uh what the shipping is 
He said, nope, don't worry about oh, it. Wow. Wow. Just, and one of the nicest things, honestly, that has happened to me since I've been doing Man vs. Meeple, thank you very much. It was super cool. Since then, I have to thank you even more because I've played, uh, I started early this week, on and off between work, taking turns uh, with Rodney and a friend of his and ours, Rich Summer, who uh, is a board gamer himself. And we're playing a podcast, right? Uh, he's had a podcast. I don't think he's done his podcast for a while, but he's an actor. You probably know him. He's on Mad Men and stuff like that. Really nice guy, both him and Rodney. Mm -hmm. And we've been playing remotely. So what I mean by that is I have the game set up in my game table, right inside my game table. We've moved it around tonight and been very careful not to upset <laughs> Cuba Libre. Uh, as does Rich and as does Rodney. Um, and we are taking turns via... Uh, an app called Signal, where it's basically just a, a messaging app, taking video of our turn, and this sounds cumbersome, <laughs> then sending that video to the others, and then everyone updates their board, and then the next person, and so on and so forth. But oh my gosh, this game, I'm, I am I think I'm in love. And really? <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, I... Part of it is that it's absolutely a blast to be playing with Rodney and Rich, but that aside which is fantastic. The game itself does some cool things. And I was telling Jeremy Howard about it on the phone today, too. We have to play this the next time he's down. I'm in. It has mechanics that, as a someone who's you know do, does board game content, I'm like, I've never seen this done before. Uh -huh. How long have these been around? And is this how it's... all coin games work? And I asked that question of Rodney when he was teaching us, because he taught us, too, over yeah. like a, a Skype call. And he, he got up from the table and went over and showed he has several coin games set up because he plays with a few people. I picture Rodney with like literally a room of tables <laughs> and there's a different coin game on each table. Is that how it that is? That is what it is. <laughs> that is exactly okay. what it is. Rodney's like the guy now at a, like the, in Central Park that plays like six games of chess at the same time. I've always, I can't, like, I get confused having more than one game on BGA going on at a time. Like, the fact that Rodney can do this, and he's teaching the games. Yeah. Like, that is a crazy well, amount it, of, like, information retention. Like I said, it has been fantastic because, you know, imagine being taught personally by Rodney, oh, of well, all people. That, yeah. that is just the coolest thing. But he's a great teacher. aside from that, the game itself does some really cool mechanics. And I'll probably do something and to, to share with you exactly how these games work on another video. But the mechanics are fascinating. It's all asymmetric in a sort of root sort of way. So each of the four factions is trying to do something very different mm. to win. And like those games, you're focusing on what you're doing, but more than any other game, you also have to not only focus on what everyone else is doing, but also understand mm. what it is they're doing because it's, why. it's something different than what you're doing. So I'm playing a faction of rebels uh, that is trying to kind of balance in between the government and Castro's people. Wow. And so I want kind of things to be in the middle. One of them wants to be on the other end. The government wants to be on the other end. And then there's this whole other fourth faction, the syndicate, that's just trying to benefit off of all the chaos and make money. And Rodney's playing both the, the syndicate and the government, which yeah. is how you, you play. You could play two players with each player controlling two factions, right? Yeah, you can play any player count. In fact, there are... And I don't have them, they're off camera, but there is literally a four page like flow chart to end all flow charts. Is that your kind of game, Emily? <laughs> <laughs> I do like a good flow chart. <laughs> I mean, and that's part of it too. There's half of me looks at these rules and these flow charts, and I would go and go, no, no way do I want to play this. And then the other half of me, like I think the part you're talking about is like, Oh my gosh, this is so beautiful how right, this works. Right. It's all so like, organized. Everything. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And and it really plays really well. I, like Jeremy on Lacerda games, right now in this moment, I could talk all night long about Cuba Libre. <laughs> but but oh what my that god, gets this you... has become the coin cast. Oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> I've taken it over. You thought you were gonna go crazy it's the on coin Lacerda. Cast. I know. I thought I was taking it over. Here you go. It with the coin really, cast. They're really elegant games, though. I mean, all the coin games are like that. They're, no, they're, they're really cool. And the last thing I'll say is I, I don't know much about it, but I have heard that they have one in development, I think, based on Robin Hood as the theme. Oh. 
Yeah, because I read about that because they want to approach more of like they're pr- trying to other put, gamers, like non coin gamers. They're trying to put it out there to appeal to more yeah. uh, traditional worked. gamers. It worked. And I have to Let's say, it, even Cuba Libre is pretty close. If you look at the board, to me, it's actually a very appealing looking board. Yeah. Uh, there's some aspects of it, like the rule book, that are very sterile looking, but um, I'm having a lot of fun with it. I mean, I'll, t- I'll be honest, completely. When I when I look when I hadn't seen the game, I expected, you know, like your chip based war games, like beige boards. No, there's a lot of color. And, oh yeah, I mean, it, and it's really well designed. I mean, everything feels really good. Yeah. I mean, all right, well, so that's, that's what I've been playing. Does anyone else want to talk about anything else they've been playing? I mean, I haven't really been like not a lot. Marvel Champions, still like always. Yeah, I mean, getting back insane. into Marvel United. I got I, I got one announcement though. Oh, I got, I got Soul Sunday coming back. We got we got some new content, guys. Check out our new content. Yeah. Man. Oh we got yeah, some, we've like, been a doing... lot more stuff coming in, and uh, I'm excited about the new things I'm working on. I'm, I'm working on Madara. I'm going to be working on Madara for like a month and a half probably. That's a big game. But uh, got some Solo Sundays coming up. Some things I'm experimenting with. I don't know. We we got new stuff. Yeah, we yeah, got yeah, yeah. some new stuff. We got a lot of stuff. One of Jeremy, Jeremy himself did a really cool new thing where he kind of gave a sneak peek. If you haven't seen it, definitely check it out. He gave you kind of a behind the scenes perspective on his process, what he does when he's setting up a shoot and recording and all of that. I think we're all going to try to do something that uh, mm-hmm. like that just to give you guys a little bit of insight on our perspective and maybe some of our philosophy on how we approach things. One of the things Ryan and I talked about that one of us might cover is just sort of like the whole concept and philosophy behind positivity and negativity Mm -hmm. as it creeps into when we (laughs) deal with things. But take a look for that. And like Jeremy said, look for all of our new content, new faces. Emily's going to be here on here from time to time. As much as we can get Emily here in front of the camera, we will absolutely. Um, So anything else? I mean, not really for me. I've got a whole lineup of games to play this weekend. So games, hopefully I'll have man, a lot to report back. Right hopefully now. these games go really well. So we'll see. And next time, if I, I will promise the next time, Emily, and I'll give you a chance to say something here if you want to say a little bit more, but we'll ask her way more questions about herself and put her on yeah. the spot. Wow. I just didn't want to put we, her on we the really, spot We tonight. really did a deep dive on her. Jeez, man. <laughs> first, time on the, first time on, we really did a right. great job of talking over her. <laughs> Uh, you know, <laughs> oh my that's God. not we true. De- we definitely need to do better next time. Do better. Do that's better, that's guys. more like do second chit chat is like the, the the important yeah. questions. Yeah, but I feel like having having a just like a get to know episode where we all talk about ourselves is pretty. Exactly. Just a new I idea. will say I was not prepared for a get to know episode. So when you said exactly, that, I was like, oh my gosh, what that's, questions I can are tell, we going to ask? I got the vibe when I said that that she's like, "What are you talking about?" <laughs> so I backed off tonight. Tell us all of your deepest fears when it comes <laughs> like, to board oh my games. Goodness. Just about board games. It's okay. <laughs> Long story short, this may be her last time. She may never want to do this again. Yeah, maybe the first and the last. <laughs> Jeremy Howard, do you have anything else to add? And and I hesitate to even ask you that. No, uh, I'm good to go, man. Thanks. <laughs> well, thanks for. I know it. Was, I know it's a little difficult communicating from such a long way away. But thanks so much for joining us here tonight, Jeremy. Yeah. And of course, Emily. Thank you so much for being here. Yeah. And doing the live stream that you guys probably watched last night. Yeah, and thanks to all of you for joining us tonight. Uh, like I said, we'll we'll have been here in the comments already with you. Mm-hmm. I think we liked doing it this way. It last was a lot time. of fun last time because uh, it, it gives us a chance to get into the comments and kind of watch with you, which is kind of a neat, fun thing to do. So we're, we're we did that again. It, tonight. it was pretty funny seeing people that didn't that thought we were live going. How are they typing? Oh, did they say? I didn't I mean, there was a couple of comments that were like, "How are you responding on the keyboard right now?" Well, hopefully you figured that out. So by we're, this, this time. is pre-recorded. This but, is pre-recorded, but but we'll be there. We will be there live commenting with you guys, or have been. So thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, that is if I can get all of this edited together. Oh boy, in, in time. <laughs> yeah, no. The timer starts now. <laughs> it does. But Good anyway, luck with that brother. Until next time, make sure everyone has fun at the table, and we'll see you then. Congratulations, you got to the end of one of our videos. Now, if you want more practice, just click on the video over here. It's another video. You might not have seen it yet, so click on it. If you don't want to do that, at least click on the subscription button below. That always helps us. And if you want notifications, please ring that bell.